we will begin by looking at this sphere and taking it into the rendering environment. Once there, I can look at the Appearances tab, clap that open, and I will edit the Satin Steel Standard Material. I will make a duplicate of it first, and I will name it Galvanized Aluminum. This is a good solution for today's tutorial because Galvanized Aluminum has a structure on it, and I think it's a good example. I changed the color to white. This is similar to aluminum, and if I render it, you can see it looks very much like an aluminum, but without the galvanizing. Many people will go in, and in order to get that galvanized effect, they will attempt to use an image instead of a color. Go ahead and let you know that this is not the recommended way to work, but let's try it. And you'll see that if you run the simulation, you will have a galvanized appearance, but it's tiled and it's quite dark. So let's look at another way of doing this more properly. This time, we'll return the color to white and remove the galvanized image, but we will provide a galvanized image of aluminum on the roughness. The roughness is interesting because this has no effect on color, but a black surface is entirely smooth and a white surface is entirely rough. Scaling is also available, as are a few other options that you can experiment with. Now, where do you get these kind of roughness bitmaps? Well, I downloaded mine off of Adobe Stock, and galvanized aluminum is quite easy to use because it is grayscale in nature. I didn't have to make any changes. But a roughness pattern should be only black and white and variations thereof. As a consequence of this, some textures and pictures that you might find online or take yourself may need to be modified. And if you let this run out, you can see the results are really very good. I think you'll be quite pleased. Now there are a few other things we could look at. Let's take a look at those now. To save us some time, I created another material, this time also in yellow, but this time I'm gonna put a bump map on it. A bump map will need either a height map or what's called a, a normal map. A height map is just black and white, and I've got a small example here, just uh, black polka dots on a white field to show you how it works. So you define that as your um, bump map swatch, and you can tell the computer what size that those bumps are based on that swatch size. You need to tell it whether or not it's a height or a um, normal map. And once you do so and apply that, you'll see that um, the software will recognize, in this case, black spaces as being low and white spaces as being high and it will tile it just as it would with a texture or something like that. So you can already see this in the preview, but if you allow the render to run for a few seconds, you can see that the effect is quite marked. As another alternative, I used a vector normal map, or normal map as they're called. Um, these describe the normals of the surface using RGB colors. They function in a very similar way. This time I used a picture and modified it in Photoshop to create a um, vector bump map or a, a normal bump map. And you can see it works quite well. If you run it for a long time and I scaled it down, you can get some really nice pictures like this. Hope you like it.